the announcement of King Charles III's cancer diagnosis earlier this year sent shockwaves through the world. As the 75-year-old monarch, who has long been a symbol of resilience and steadfastness, stepped back from public duties to focus on his health, many began to wonder what the future would hold for the British monarchy. Now, six months later, with reports of his condition improving and plans for an upcoming royal tour of Australia and Samoa, the king appears to be on the mend. But behind the scenes, the road to recovery has been anything but smooth. From battling the physical and emotional toll of cancer treatment to maintaining his duties as sovereign, King Charles's journey has been marked by both quiet strength and the immense challenges that come with leading a nation while fighting a personal battle. Today, we delve into the inside story of King Charles's cancer battle, exploring why the monarch has remained tight-lipped about his specific diagnosis, the nature of his treatment, and the reason his son, Prince Harry, was granted only a brief audience during a recent visit. In February, Buckingham Palace made a somber announcement that King Charles III had been diagnosed with cancer and would be temporarily stepping back from public life to receive treatment. The news was met with widespread concern, as the king, known for his dedication to his royal duties, had rarely shown signs of slowing down despite his advancing age. The initial shock was compounded by the fact that the palace provided few details about the type of cancer or the specifics of his treatment, leaving many to speculate about the severity of his condition. Sources close to the royal family have since revealed that King Charles's battle with cancer began in January when he was first hospitalized for treatment related to an enlarged prostate. While the king has been forthcoming about his prostate issues, he has chosen to keep the details of his cancer diagnosis private. According to insiders, this decision was driven by his desire to reach out and support a broader spectrum of people affected by cancer. By not disclosing the specific type of cancer, the king hopes to avoid alienating those who may be battling different forms of the disease. This approach reflects his commitment to using his experience to raise awareness and offer encouragement to others, much like the significant public response he received after revealing his prostate procedure. Despite the initial secrecy surrounding his diagnosis, King Charles made his first public appearance after the announcement at a cancer hospital on April 30th. The visit, during which he met with fellow patients, was a poignant reminder of his connection to the people and his determination to continue serving, even as he faces his own health challenges. However, it was also clear that the king was navigating a delicate balance between his public duties and the need to protect his health. The precautions taken to shield him from secondary infections were reminiscent of the measures implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic, with strict limits on the number of people he could interact with and careful planning of his schedule to include ample rest periods. One of the most notable aspects of King Charles's treatment has been the absence of visible side effects typically associated with cancer therapies, such as hair loss. This has led to speculation about the nature of his treatment, with many wondering how the king has managed to avoid the more debilitating consequences of cancer care. According to a source, the treatment he is receiving is highly evolved and sophisticated, though not pioneering in any way, as it is available to all cancer patients. The effectiveness of these modern treatments has allowed the king to maintain much of his appearance and avoid some of the more distressing side effects that many cancer patients endure. However, this does not mean that his journey has been without challenges. The king's illness also impacted his ability to participate in key royal events. Most notably, he was unable to ride his horse, Noble, during the Trooping the Color in June, a role that was instead fulfilled by Princess Anne. While there were reports of the king being furious about missing this important event, it has since been clarified that he accepted the situation with grace, understanding that both his cancer and his prostate procedure necessitated a more cautious approach to his public duties. This pragmatic acceptance reflects the king's understanding of the importance of prioritizing his health while still fulfilling his responsibilities as the sovereign. Throughout his 103-day hiatus from public duties, King Charles remained largely out of the public eye, adhering to a rigorous schedule of weekly treatments in London and taking extended rest periods at Sandringham, Highgrove, and Windsor. His recovery process was thrown into temporary disarray when Prince Harry unexpectedly announced a visit from Los Angeles. The King's aides quickly adjusted his plans to minimize the risk of infection, resulting in Harry being granted just 30 minutes of his father's time at Clarence House. 
this brief meeting underscored the delicate balance that the king and his team have had to maintain between his desire to engage with family and the necessity of safeguarding his health. As the summer months have brought warmer weather and a more relaxed atmosphere, the king's health has shown encouraging signs of improvement. The gradual relaxation of the stringent precautions in place allowed him to participate in important events, such as the D-Day commemorations, without compromising his recovery. However, those close to the king remain vigilant, ensuring that rest and recovery remain top priorities, even as he resumes more public-facing duties. Despite the progress made, the queen and his closest aides are likely to continue urging caution as he navigates the ongoing challenges of living with and recovering from cancer. King Charles III's cancer battle has been a journey marked by resilience, determination, and a steadfast commitment to his role as monarch. While much of his experience has been kept private, the glimpses we have seen reveal a man who is not only fighting for his health but also striving to continue serving his people. As he prepares for the upcoming royal tour of Australia and Samoa, the king's return to public life is a testament to his strength and the effectiveness of his treatment. Yet, this journey is far from over. The challenges he faces are ongoing, and the need for rest and recovery will remain a constant consideration. In the face of adversity, King Charles has shown that even in the most trying times, the duty to serve and the will to carry on remain unshaken. As he continues to recover, the world watches with hope and admiration, inspired by the quiet courage of a monarch who, even in the face of illness, continues to embody the spirit of leadership.